I'll tell you a quick story. I w- when I was, I was, you know, on the wire, as many people know. And one night I was rehearsing a scene with one of the actors. And uh, like at nine o'clock at night, we got a call. They said, stop rehearsing. We're rewriting the scene. And she threw a fit. Why do they do this? Blah, blah, blah. How are we supposed to? Blah, blah, blah. Next day on set, guess who knew their lines and who didn't? Because I was like, well, it's a better scene. Let's learn it. Great. Let's learn it. Oh, let's see what they did. And she got on set and, and bitched about the short time. And I just, I, again, not bragging. I'm just saying, I think what got in her way was all this extra stuff. That's my thing. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our panel, Wendy Braun, Michael Kostroff, Parvesh China, Deb Lee, and Rochelle Isip. Welcome. <laughs> all right, here we all are. So this is such an exciting panel because we are a great mixture. We've got three actors here, and then we have two organizational experts, people who coach other people on productivity. And so I'm so excited about this mix because I think what we're going to be able to do today is to get some inside answers on how we go about getting things done as actors. Okay. So I'm going to start with our first, with our three actors. And what I want to ask you is, um, would you please tell us a goal that you have reached? And if you could kind of say along the way, I had this goal, this goal, this goal, the trajectory that got you to that goal, just to get us started in thinking this way. So who would like to start? I'll jump in. Uh, Because as you know, uh, Laurie, when you invited me to this, I objected that I'm not an expert at organization. And so, so, uh, but you wanted me here anyway. Um, I sure did. I still do. uh, Like a lot of people, I I had a successful pandemic project, which was uh, something that's been sitting on my shelf for a long time, which was to write a stage actor's handbook, which shockingly didn't exist. Um, And I think... uh, one of the keys to getting that done was a, a partnership with someone and being sort of accountable and, you know, nudging each other along. I think also the absence of other work was very helpful <laughs> to getting it done. Um, and certainly breaking it into uh, little steps along the way, because writing a book is an enormous undertaking and particularly something on this kind of topic when I had lots, the first thing was to sit down and go, well, what might we include? What might, it look like. And I think with anything, I, I always try to try to start a process without without feeling obligated to, to, to get it all worked out at the beginning, to just sort of have a nice open brainstorm, uh, which I did with my co-author, Julie. Uh, and that sort of leads to next steps, next steps, next steps. So that's my general. Uh, at, at the book came out in July. I mean, so it, it got done, which is it's an amazing thing to finish. Yeah. Huge congrats. And so it sounds like there's some accountability in there too, by having someone that you're working with. It was very helpful, very yeah. helpful. And also, to, you know, we, we were collecting uh, quotes for the book from um, a bunch of very famous stage actors and there was a lot of divide and conquer and okay, I'll take this person. I'll find this person's rep and like that. Yeah. That's great. And could you tell us how long before the pandemic, when you actually were working on it, how long had you been thinking about doing something like that? Probably, probably two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just sat there like, oh yeah, somebody should do that. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Wendy? Yeah. yeah. Congrats, Michael, by the way. That's oh, amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the, the completed thank you. project, right? You know, I was just yes, thinking sir. back on my career and the time, and I know so many actors, you know, want to get like a new manager or new agent. And I thought about the steps I always took when maybe I was with an agent and I wanted a manager. And so I thought I'd just share real quick what I've done that might help others is, um, you know, I never went to my agents and said, can you help me get a manager in that really general way? Sometimes I would do my own detective work of actually looking at their entire roster and on IMDb Pro and looking at who they already had, what actors had a manager that was already with my agent. 
<clears throat> so that way I would go to them with maybe A, B and C manager that they are that I knew they're already working with and saying, you know, I noticed some current clients are repped by A, B and C. Uh -huh. Could you, um, how open are you to uh, making an introduction? And I, it's interesting because along the way you learn how open your agents are. You learn if that's the right place, you learn, um, you know, who, who might be a fit. And I, I often got help. I mean, similar to what Michael's saying is asking for help and asking it in the, in a way that's, you know, I have this idea or I have, you know, my idea is. I have these three managers. Would you introduce me at least starting there? So um, I think that's that was one thing I always did that that helped me along the way. And it always led to the next logical step. And of course, you have to follow up and be ready and all that. But it's asking for help along the way and getting really specific with what you want instead of just general. No agent wants to just find you a manager. You know, that's an overwhelming thing. It's like, I don't even know where to begin. Right. So you doing some of that work. And, and it might not be A, B, and C. It might end up being something else, but that was a place to start that always helped me. Yeah, that's so great. Thank you so much, Wendy. I know a lot of people, you know, have that kind of situation come up quite a bit. And so thank you for breaking that down. And also you're showing us too, it's like the parts that you do and then the parts that you ask help with. That yes. It's not all on you because you're asking, again, like Michael was saying, like a partnership, working mm -hmm. with someone to keep that momentum moving forward so exactly. that you finally get what you want. Exactly. Exactly. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Harvesh? I'm incredibly lazy and <laughs> I just am. So even the idea of like setting a goal, like getting an agent in eight and a half months, you know, I've. I never could operate like that. So what I've actually found, you know, that whole like thing about what is luck, you know, where preparation meets opportunity. So as actors, we're always just preparing in some way, shape or form. I think, so I don't think as much as like, cause there will, no, there will not be one, you know, roadmap for everyone. You know, there are many different ways to get to downtown. You know, your dad's an agent, <laughs> you know, your, 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 your father's, a, you know, a sheen. You know, things are different for some people. So for the rest of us, I think about the goals and what time I'm kind of doing in between. It's always like the in between. What am I doing in between? When do I have control of my routine? It's when I'm not on someone else's schedule. It's not when I'm on like, okay, you're working three out of 10 days on this film, or um, you're really, you know, we're really just going to be really rehearsing until tech week. And then we're going to have a four week run at, you know, the vineyard. It's different. You know, that's when you're on someone else's timeline. So what I think about the goals that I set are what can I do during like possibly the two weeks I have off on hiatus or the months until I work again. It's all, it can all be the same. So for me, a lot of the, just kind of the basic goals, kind of that self-care that I have to kind of keep up with is, is that the day in, day out. So for it's whatever exercise it is for you, uh, it's whatever instrument taking care of, you know, which is separate than I think than the yoga and the weightlifting or strength training. It is like any kind of stretching, warm up. again, class, class, class for me, from cold readings to drop-ins to obviously attending anything that the SAG After Foundation has. Um, these are how I think. I think more about those goals. Are you staying active and busy when you're not, getting paid like the living money, you know, what are you doing in between? That's because I mean, who can tell you, like, I can never tell anyone. I can't even tell the other gay Indian American actor from Chicago born in 1979, how your path will be. It's just different. So it's more about finding for us, what can you do when it is your time? And for me, it's oh, just like, I, I do that checklist of like, I worked out, I fed the dog, I did something actory, and I talked to someone else in the industry. That's my small little thing. I have to talk to an agent, act, and it's usually just another actor friend. It's usually the same actor friend, but it's someone who's not like a not actor, not artist. That's great. And I, I think that just from these three examples, you know, we, we see that we are, we're such a variety of um people and approaches. And like you said, Parvesh, like there's many ways to get downtown. So, you know, it, it th this is exactly the, the juicy part of having a panel of people who have been working for so long at doing what you, what you do, because what you realize is that there are so many ways 
to, to make it work. And it just thrills me. Michael, do you have a question? You have your hand up. <laughs> I, I don't know what the protocol is, but uh, I was I was uh, I was inspired by what the, the other two guests have just said. I want to just add that something that Parv said really resonated with me, which is I think a lot of us are easily discouraged and big picture is a, you know, I also am a big time waster and to sort of acknowledge your little, the little steps, like I'll say, Oh, I didn't do anything today. And my wife will say, how many people did you coach today? Michael, <laughs> you know, what do you mean? What do you mean? You did nothing. You called your publisher and uh, said something. About, I mean, and, and I think we give a tendency to not acknowledge the little baby steps because sometimes it doesn't feel like work because we love what we do, but yeah. Sitting and having a talk about technique with your actor friend, that's a thing, you know? Um, and if and, we do it at lunch, we can write off that lunch. Too. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and the other thing that, that w w Wendy said that really uh, reminded me that uh, I'm a big fan of the thing that overwhelms me. Maybe I don't need to learn it. Maybe I go to the person who does know how to do it. Um, I think many of you probably know uh, David H. Lawrence, the 17th. If you don't, he's a great guy. And for years, he was nagging me to put my um, my audition class as an online course. And I finally said, you know, I'm never going to do this. So partner with me and <laughs> let's get it done. And now it's an online course. I would never have wanted to figure out the technology and the, arrange the filming of it. And he did, you know, all of that. So I'm a great fan of uh, share the task with somebody who wants to do that and is good at it, you know? Uh, and to that end, bartering is also good. If there are plenty of people who are like, oh, I know how to edit a video. Don't worry about that. I'll do that. You know, what I don't know how to do is blank. And you go, oh, that's what I know how to do. So. So now I'd like to uh, move the spotlight over to our wonderful uh, organizational experts today. And um, we'd love to hear a little bit about how you got involved in this field of productivity and time management. Rochelle, would you like to start? Sure. So I actually started out in the world of public relations after school and kind of got my feet wet there, working with the media and the press, organizing events. And organization, time management, and productivity has always been near and dear to my heart. So after several years, I decided to strike out on my own. And since then, I've been working with individuals, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and organizations, you know, to help people basically relieve that stress. You know, we all, we all experience the dailies, the daily to-dos, the weekly to-dos, and you know, it can get in the way of what we need to deliver and provide to the world, you know, to share our gifts. And for me, it really is an experience of here, let me help you smooth that out so that you can do your job so much better with so much more ease and pleasure. So that's really what drives me uh, to do what I do. And have you been doing this since you were like little, like when you, when you were a kid, were you always that person who was Tell, you know, making things organized, taking, making chaos into something that was, uh, you know, palatable in some way. I was, I was, I, I organized, it. I organized my Halloween candy. I organized the refrigerator magnets. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I love learning about the periodic table of the elements in school. Yeah, it, it was, it was a thing. <laughs> so it came, came naturally. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's so great. Thank you. And Deb? Hi. So I started out after school in New York as a teacher and, uh, you know, floated around as a, a teacher in New York public schools and then ended up at a child care company where I became the director of the child care um, center and of the region. And then Ultimately, it was time to make a change. I was itching to do something different. And I saw someone on TV, as it were, uh, organizing someone else's bathroom. And I said, I can do that. I know how to do that. I do that all the time for myself, for other people. And so I would help other people organize their physical stuff. So I was and still am a professional organizer, but I don't do the stuff anymore. I really do the mindset and I do the, the tips and the techniques and the tech tools to help someone do the things that are important in that moment at that time and to break down those big goals into smaller, more manageable things that they can actually accomplish. 
Um, so that's what I do today with small business owners. Some are, some of my clients are also in the education field. So this is pretty interesting for me to be here tonight because I also work with creatives who have a hard time sometimes with not doing, um, with starting and sometimes not finishing or all the time not finishing and really sort of grabbing that, you know, that feeling of, oh, it's something fresh and new, but not seeing it through. And to be able to not change who you are, but use the right set of tools that fit you to get at least one of those goals accomplished. So that's how I got my start. Okay. I know, I mean, just even from so far, we're talking about that everybody has a different way of getting things done, but what we really want to do is get things done, right? Um, so let's talk about when we have a very short notice for a self-tape that has to come in. Um, so for Rochelle and Deb, this is something where it's an audition. It comes in. We are required as actors to be able to put the whole package together and send it back out into the world. And, um, as quickly as possible, sometimes it's very fast. So uh, Michael Parvesh or Wendy, would you like to start us out on maybe some tips about working with, uh, self tapes that have a very quick turnaround? Sure. I, I'll, I'll dive in. I do it weekly and love it. And uh, three things I'll share. Uh, I would say when I get a self tape, I read everything the minute I get it and I make it the priority. So I, I'm married. I have kids. I have a dog, um, but I move a lot of things around to accommodate my work on the self tape. Um, even if it's a fast turnaround, you know, I'll just instantly look when is it due? And I always try to get it in as early as I can without having the work suffer. Um, I always say, and maybe the gals will agree with me that, you know, you either make it a priority or you make excuses in mo in a lot of things. So I, it's a priority to me to, to do my work on my self tape. I stay flexible in my schedule so I can adjust, but, and I'm thankful I have a helpful hu husband who happens to be an actor. So we do a lot of self tapes, but every day it's like, what do you have going on? What's moving around? I mean, it's a constant, and maybe that's the fun of it. We do enjoy that sometimes. Sometimes it's crazy, but we both, um, you know, help out. So I, I make it a priority. I move things around and I focus on the work. Uh, and I, I and the other tip um, is to know your environment. I remember um, I, I worked on the last season of This Is Us and the self-tape came in on a Wednesday and it was due on a Friday. I did. I, I didn't like rush to do it that night. I did take the time to do the work, but I know in my neighborhood on Friday, you got leaf blowers and garbage trucks and I am not waiting till Friday morning, getting mad at my environment that they're not cooperating with the self tape. So I got it in, you know, I did it Thursday. We moved, I moved things around in my schedule that I had Thursday to get it in on Thursday. I got it in a day early and also knowing my environment. So I think that's helpful. Uh, and I booked the job. So that was good too. <laughs> um, and then, and then to, to that point, the third thing I'd say is to trust your instincts. I think as actors, you know, we all, a lot of people are going around trying to figure out what is the thing or what do I have to do? And sometimes it's, to stop looking outside for the answer and just trust your instincts. And what I love about getting a quick self tape is you have no choice, right? You, you, you have no choice. So when the turnaround is fast, I say, and really anytime <laughs> go with your gut. I would tell actors, you don't need 20 takes. You're never going to get that many takes on set. So don't practice those habits, prepare like a pro, do your work, commit, play, send it off. Um, that that's, and do it again and again. And then, and then when you don't book a million times, try to find the joy in it again and, and try to bring your joy back to it. And um, that's definitely how I booked This Is Us was just bringing my joy back to it, trusting my instincts, knowing my environment and making it a priority. Fabulous. <laughs> Michael, would you like to? Uh, well, yeah, there? yes, Laurie, as, as you know, I, uh, I, I teach a course on the psychology of auditioning. That's my, my jam, it's my passion. Um, one thing that never makes a self tape better is, uh, anxiety, panic, or flipping out or getting mad or feeling victimized. None of those things get the job done. None of those things make the job, make the, the product better. And I think we have to teach ourselves not to do that because it has no value. Uh, one of the things I think we can do in advance is figure out the methodologies that we like. I, I'll, I'll explore what I mean. For some people, some, some people I speak to have discovered that they would rather go somewhere 
to a to somebody who does that for them, or they, you know, develop your list of friends that you can call last minute and go, hey, can we do this tonight? I mean, I have people I can call now and say, can you get on with, with me in 10 minutes? And they're like, sure. And I, I have that ready to go so that I'm not thrown by it every time. And I have even, this is my most shameless technique, my most shameful technique. I've even read the other lines, uh, the other characters' lines and edited it in, this, that sound in, if you know how to do some of that editing. So I've, I've, I've done the scene with myself. It's not my favorite, but it's doable. But anyway, ha- having those methodologies and, and also uh, I'm re-examining the mythology that it takes a certain amount of time to prep an audition. I, I speak to people like, if I don't have two, you know, two days, I can't do it. It's like, well, let's revisit that. Let's revisit that. Um, because I think we, we have a lot of myths are in and around this. Uh, I really want to encourage anybody watching. Listen, I, I don't love the self tape. Some people do, but the one thing I know is that they are, they exist. This is what we are doing and it's time to get over it. It's time to, to work out your, anger, frustration, and and move those things out of, out of your life because it's not going to help. No amount of railing against it is going to make those go away. Also, you have to know that when they give you a last minute audition, it isn't because they like to sit back and go, <laughs> let's just see if we can screw with these actors. And a lot of actors think that way. They're like, this is so disrespectful. Why do they do this? It's like, they don't do it to be disrespectful. They do that because it's the amount of time that they have. That's what they're able to do. So I think all of those things make for a better self-tape and I find make me better able to memorize and better able to just do the thing and embrace it and enjoy it and love it. Once I've sort of looked at some of those falsehoods, you know, uh, like that they're doing it to bother us or that they're, they're, it's unjust or that it's impossible and really kind of picking apart those, those ideas, I, I think is uh, among the most helpful ways to, to do it quick. I'll tell you a quick story. I w- when I was, I was, I'm not name dropping, but I was, you know, on the wire as many people know. And one night I was rehearsing a scene with one of the actors and uh, like at nine o'clock at night, we got a call. They said, stop rehearsing. We're rewriting the scene. And she threw a fit. Why do they do this? Blah, blah, blah. How are we supposed to blah, blah, blah. Next day on set, guess who knew their lines and who didn't? Because I was like, well, it's a better scene. Let's learn it. Great. Let's learn it. Oh, let's see what they did. And she got on set and, and bitched about the short time. And I just, I, again, not bragging. I'm just saying, I think what got in her way was all this extra stuff. Fabulous. Pardon Hi, Lori. I have Hi. some things to say. Please do. Thank you. I'm just going to go really quick with, I, I wrote notes because I thought maybe we should prepare for the, you know, the panel about preparation. Um, I actually had self tapes on my notes. What I had actually said was, um, just practical things like I know from the East Coaster, New Yorker, Chicago pals with the smaller apartments to the Angelinos and everywhere in, in between space. We have more here on the West Coast. I know the East Coasters have less. If you can keep a permanent space, um, I'm going to mention my best friend Sonal a lot. She we one of the biggest things we learned in her apartment was just like keeping the self tape space up. It always felt like a workspace. That was it. Like we literally like rearranged like a dining area. Cause I'm like, are you having guests over during the pandemic? Are you self-taping every day? What's the priority right now? So we had the self-tape set up permanently. I am mainly a voiceover actor. I just grabbed my voiceover mic from my booth because it normally lives there. You know, like, it's just like that stays there. So these are just my things that I just keep permanent for the last minute self-tape auditions. Now, I'm glad that the union finally got language in the last commercial contract. Believe it or not, in the commercials is where we finally have them talking about self-tape limits in terms of like whether it be pagers or whatnot. It's a start. They've heard. We all know it's it's working. However, there's also the people who are just going to do it. If there's going to be the people for every nine of us who are going to complain and be like, I don't have time. I had plans tonight to go to the Geffen. Too bad because there's going to be that person who just does it and will get booked. So you can either, like Michael just said, you can either fight, fight, fight or do it. And um, I, I mean, like, 
I put in my calendar, in my iCal, I love calendaring. I can get lost in kind of the time management of time management. Rochelle, Deb, I think you'll understand. Like I can spend, I used to spend those hours in the aisles at Office Max. You know, Ooh, what's my new weekly planner going to be? The school one's crap. I need a new one. And this is before like the Palm Pilots and everything. That being said, green, the color of money, the color that lets me live is the color of my auditions and bookings calendar. Because whether I book, whether I audition, that's my job. And that's what pays. So like a self-tape, like Wendy said, becomes a boom, boom, boom priority that you have because then you have that money then that lets us take a week off, you know, when everyone else can't. So it is a priority. So make it so. Um, I used to love going into the rooms because I thought, and I'm looking at the camera directly because I don't want to be intimate because I know these things now. We have to be this way. I always loved going into the room because I wanted to win the people. My charm, my charisma, my acting, but I was friendly and funny. I thought, ha, self-tape world, how am I going to ever work? How am I going to, how am I going to schmooze and, and talk to people? Uh, for me, the lazy procrastinator meant that I did not have to memorize. I got really good at getting my teleprompter apps. David Lawrence told me about like three or four, I'm sure. Like I, I booked one of the pandemic shows during the, pen, the quarantine shows for NBC, all on a teleprompter app. I literally stared and read my pages as I did it the night before. You, you adjust your eyeline or you lock, and this is where everyone thinks that this is my new eyeline. This is where everything is. But no, we know that here's the deadlock. So just these practical things. So like, I I don't think you're, you're a better or worse actor, in my opinion, whether or not you memorized or not. Memorized means that you're getting paid that day and you probably have to be memorized because you're on set and Tom Cruise is dangling from a helicopter. You should be memorized. But maybe until the final callback in person again, then you can memorize again. I cheat, cheat, cheat all the time. And I know Michael, Wendy and I, we have partners who will happily read with us, but we audition, Sonal swears by it. I think people are, readers are there. They won't give you notes. You, they might, you can ask, but I think like they're just there to read the lines with you 24 seven, apparently. So this is just another practical thing. I'm saying this all because whether or not we like it, and it will change, they're not going to give us 15 pages for an hour long the night before anymore. I hope that will change. But until they do, and the producers who's in Bucharest finishing up his other pilot needs to see it at his morning before he gets on a flight, the person who did the 15 pages will, will book it. The, the, the ones that like Michael and I have talked about, the ones who will complain, won't. So right now it sucks, it's in transition, but in this last minute self-tape world, I always come and I'm sure, you know, it's we, we, race has something to do with this, where I'm getting at. When you are a gay person of color, sometimes you just have to do the things that you have to do. And I'm sure other people on this panel, everyone know, out there too, knows that there are some of us who just have to do it. You have to just take it and do it. And right now we're in this transition and those of us who can and do are really going to succeed in the self-tape world. It sucks. Everyone knows. Everyone hates it. But rather or not, like I was the self, I had to be, when you in the room and now I'm like, okay, I booked the second biggest job of my career. My second two series regulars during the pandemic off of a teleprompter app. So that's where, again, it can't work for everyone. You memorizers keep memorizing. But for some of us, don't kill yourself. There is a way to do it. Even if it is your partner holding the iPad and scrolling while he's reading with you. We have a better system now. We have a better system. Fabulous. I, I just wanted to um, say on point, totally on point, work with what you have. So, you know, I don't like teleprompter apps because they don't, they don't gel with me. I use them every so often when I have to do something, uh, you know, and it's going to be recorded, but I like to walk around and, you know, read everything I'm going to say. I practice my flubs. I practice all of it because I, I need to be ready in case that happens. So I think part of it is accepting that this is par for the course. And I'm not saying this because I'm not an actor at, at any point or any time, never will I ever be. But, you know, there are times when I'm called to talk about a product and I need to be able to speak intelligently and I need to be able to find the time. So sometimes it's wait time. Maybe you're in the car wash, you know, maybe you're at the line in the supermarket, you know, maybe you are running to the bathroom for 10 minutes and you're just sort of going through it in your head or you're sitting in the car or on the metro doing all of that. So making use of those times and, you know, someone else said earlier, you know, make it a priority. 
if it's a priority, you will probably find the five or 10 minutes, you know, back in the day when we were told we had to exercise for our health, it was, you know, hours and hours in the gym, but you can do 10 minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon. So it's really breaking it down so that it works for you. So, so I totally love the message that's coming out here, the mindset and using what you have to your advantage. Deb, for so many of us, especially like the, the, the stage readings, the voiceover, we get so used to like, we can do that quick read. So this, in my mind, just for, for especially for those of us who've done the stage readings where we don't have to memorize, yeah. but you still want to be pre- present. You just really are just glancing. Right. That's that kind of, I feel like the virtual world, that's that version of it. It's the, yeah. the teleprompter app has become kind of my script in hand, except I don't need to hold it. Rochelle, I was going to ask you if you have anything to add. Otherwise, I have another um, start off of uh, some new questions in, an, in, an, in another. Um, uh, well, it's actually it all. Everything today is going to be related. I think that's what's so exciting about because I hope that for, for people that are watching that it'll be like, oh, I never thought of it that way. I mean, that's how I feel when we're all here talking. It, that feels so nice. But Rochelle, would you like to um, add something to that or let's start with something new? Sure. I had a few things um, that I was Great. thinking about. Um, you know, one thing that was brought up by Michael and everyone else is that mindset. And, you know, when you get into your head of this is a priority, do everything you possibly can to communicate with others. You know, if that means the people that you're working with in your household, if it's someone outside externally who you're back and forth, let them know I'm on a deadline. I'll get back to you by this time. You know, if, if there's something that's running in your head that, you know, might distract you, just make that first contact so that it's out of your head so you can focus on what you need to do. Second, um, I think for people, it might be helpful if they haven't already done so to put together either a routine or a checklist to help you because the process will be the same, right? You get a last minute call, these things have to be done. What do I have to do? Take a few minutes, it won't take that long to run through and just write out or type out what are the steps, what needs to happen from start to finish. And then you can type it up, print it out, write it out and, you know, stick it, um, you know, just, you know, near your workspace on your phone so that you have that checklist to go over so that it's not a constant, what do I have to do now? Oh no, did I forget the, uh, so it's from start to finish. So you have all the pieces laid out for you. So you're not, again, wasting mental energy or focus on something that should be, you know, easy peasy. (laughs) So, um. Yeah, those are uh, my thoughts about that. Um, so, Rochelle, let's start with, um, I wanted to kind of go the opposite. So we were just talking about having a last minute self-tape that we need to get in. So let's turn this around now. And what about when you don't have specific deadlines, but you're dealing with a long list of possible action steps that you could be doing for your career? So um, do you have any suggestions for that? When you have, you, you suddenly find that you have free time, you're in between. Uh, Parv was talking earlier about like maybe having that space in between the, the, you know, when you were just working and now you have a couple of weeks or maybe you don't know how long it's going to be. What are some tools that we could use or think about knowing that those times may be coming and we might have a lot of things we feel like we should be doing? Yeah, so one thing I think that people tend to not really appreciate is either a physical calendar, like a wall calendar or a paper planner, um, because it helps you actually visualize the time. You know, when is, ne- when is today? When is tomorrow? When is next week? When is next month? And if you don't naturally have or have a good sense as to time or the passage of time, this can help. Um, so if you, you know, are not used to, let's say, scheduling things, you can just try it out. You know, you can, you know, print out a calendar, use a piece of paper, just start writing down things so that you get a sense of, oh, this is when this will happen today. I need to have this done in two months time. Hmm. And then you can start filling in the pieces because I think there's that tendency for folks to look at everything as I have, it's all at once, everything's happening all at once. And it is and it isn't, it's kind of a, a dichotomy there. 
Um, but the more you are able to visualize it, to get a sense of that and incorporate it in your work, I think can be really helpful. Um, I will suggest two techniques that I like to recommend to people. The first is what I like to call roll the ball. And what that is, is to just get that little thing done that will make the next piece go so much easier. So if you have a large project or something, you know, um, big that you want to accomplish, just do that one thing just to get you over that hurdle or that, you know, initial, I haven't really started it yet. I'm, I do this in my own work. Sometimes if I'm not feeling up to writing, I'll open up a word processing document and just title it. I did something. I did it. <laughs> it's enough to get me going because then at that point, it seems so silly not to not keep going. So sometimes you just have to roll that ball, just put that thing in motion for two months time, a month's time. And the other thing is to focus on the now and just identify a couple of things that you can do, you know, in a short period of time, maybe, um, you know, three to five quick tasks that can be done in a half an hour, you know, make a phone call, send an email, send a text, check something, download something, just quick, 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 because um, these little bits of action will just, you know, make you feel so much more accomplished and you've actually done something. Um, and you don't really need to apply a lot of, um, you know, mental process or, you know, thought to do, to do it. So that can be really, um, you know, encouraging just to get the things done. I love it. We like feeling good about getting things. I love that idea too, of just like rolling the ball. I, How about for you, Deb? Do you have something that you'd like to add for that? Yeah, I, I love the, the the use of the calendar. I'm a digital person, so I would say use a digital calendar because you don't have to remember to take it with you. It's usually with you on your phone. <laughs> so that's, that's my preference. Um, but I, I also think it helps to have a roadmap. Um, so it could be one that's really fluid. You know, in the next six weeks or the next six months, I intend to do X. And then you put it on that calendar and you walk yourself. So you're walking out into the future and then you walk back to the present and you just sort of map out the first one or two things. And if you're not sure what those one or two things should be, find somebody who can help you figure it out. So a coach, obviously, but other actor friends, you know, a community that can say, okay, I'll give you 10 minutes of my time or let's do it for each other. You do this sort of brainstorming about what are those aspirations? Well, I've always wanted to do this. Well, let's break that down. So usually you know, it's this really big, hairy thing that we're trying to, to sort of tackle. And if we can just make it that much easier. And, you know, Rochelle talked about the passage of time. Sometimes for creative people, it's hard because you get sucked into the thing that you're doing, or maybe you feel like you don't have the time. So if you can see the time passing and using a tool like a time timer or some sort of app, like a, uh, there's something called Focus Keeper. So it's 25 minutes of activity. And when the 25 minutes are up, you take a five minute break and you go off and do something else. If you feel like you have more time in you, you start a whole new round of 25 minutes. So really work with what works for your brain and what will help push you forward. So whether it's an app or, you know, old school pencil and paper, or just talking to other people, figure out what those things are, what that formula is for you. Um, I want to jump in on this. I had a friend who was studying to be a counselor and, uh, um, psychotherapy and, and every year at her school they did the same experiment they played ring toss and you know ring toss you throw the ring five feet you get five points 10 feet you get 10 points 20 feet you get 20 points and the reason they did this was that every year when they did this experiment they had the exact same results the people who walked away from the game with the most points were the ones who went for the three foot toss again and again, three foot toss, three foot toss. And this is how they, they started to talk to each other this way about solving problems. They, oh, I got this thing. They're like, okay, what's the three foot toss? Well, I can pick out a font. Okay, do that, do that. You know, uh, I also know as a writer that if I am not willing to just sit down and write crap, it'll never get done. I have to sit down and start. I got to put my fingers on the keys. I will swear up and down. I've got nothing to say and nothing to write and until I start to do it. So I'm, I'm just echoing back Rochelle's thing about, about just roll the ball, even a little tiny bit and go for the three foot toss and go, all right, that's way too easy. Yeah. Do that. Do that. Do the thing that's way too easy. Yeah. I think sometimes you have to talk yourself into it. Right. So yes. when I have to talk myself into something, I say, I just need to give it five minutes just five minutes. And if five minutes come and go and I'm done, I am released from this project and I can move on. 
but usually after five or 10 minutes, my juices get flowing and something will happen. So find your minimum five minutes, 10 hours, two minutes, you know, whatever that is, you know, as long as it works for you and what's happening between the ears, then, then yeah. Go it also with works. It also works for working out. Like, it does. Just 10 minutes. Just it really 10 does. Minutes. <laughs> and Deb, it, it also, it also works uh, with, for my kids and their homework. I'm like, why don't you sit down for 10, yes. just do 10 minutes. And they actually often yeah. go longer, but they, go to know that it's only 10. Um, yeah. I wanted to jump in on this conversation, especially Lori, because you kind of were talking, I think, and so many actors can relate of like all the things I should do, like that word should. And so I wanted to sort of address that. Um, I know a lot of actors are really, they, I think they tend because we're creatives. We, we do, we take on sort of too many things at once out, out often out of the should do place. And I think we're taught as a culture to like take massive action on as much as you can. And um, I think when your action comes from that energy of fear and doubt and lack, right, just that you should be doing all these things. So then now you're taking action from that place. Um, it doesn't result in success and you get burnt out. So a simple exercise that I like to teach or, you know, tell actors about is to write out your should do list, like after this call or whenever, um, and literally, literally write the word I should, and then write each task. So each task has an, I should like, I should connect with casting directors. Or I should do a self tape challenge. I should update my reel. I should create more content. I should do a web series. Like all that noise, all the should do list. Maybe it might be a lot of things you, you might've even said you were gonna do at the beginning of the year and now it's September and you haven't. That list, right? And then, and you can do this in your mind, but it's helpful to, as our experts state today too, to write it out, um, to cross out the word should and replace it with could. You can feel it like lightens the load, just even say it. So this way you're turning obligations and, and that heaviness into options. And when you do that, then the next step is really to see what lights you up. Because I think a lot of actors, they'll see someone do a web series and then get a series. So they think they should do a web series. But if that's not lighting you up, you're never gonna, that's not your path, right? And so I think choosing what lights you up from the options that you've created by taking the weight of should do off your shoulders, then you're coming at it from a more empowered place of choosing versus that pressurized place of like, oh, and that's when we feel really, we get depressed and we get bummed and we don't even work out for 10 minutes or whatever, right? We're like, oh, I should do all the things. So, um, so, Turn should to could and see what lights you up. And then my other thought on that, I just want to say it, is that um, taking time to rest and recharge is productive. And I didn't learn that. I, I'm a type A, I'm a recovering type A doer. So <laughs> I've had to learn the more I actually make space, put it in the calendar, then and then I not only figure out what lights me up, I then can easily take more inspired action on what I want to do and stay with it longer. So those are those are some things I want to add. That's fabulous. Uh Rochelle, in the uh, the list that you have about doing good to do lists um, that I found online. I thought it was just wonderful. I don't know if you'd like to share that with people so that um, they can uh, look at that. But something that you had said was to start with the end goal in mind. I thought that was so um, helpful to be able to focus your thoughts. Would you like to share so that people can download your list? Sure. It's um 10 effective ways to make your to-do list or 10 ways to make your uh, to-do list more effective. Um, and you can find it on my website, theorderexpert.com. And yeah, when it comes to to-do lists, I think, you know, we get caught up in, I have to do, I have to do, I have to do, but we're not just creating lists just for the sake of doing lists, just to do things, right? We have goals that we want to reach. So by really drilling down and getting crystal clear about what it is you want to accomplish, you know, um, as an actor, okay, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to get a new series of headshots? Do you want to get on this program? Do you want to talk to this person? You know, make that your focus and then work backwards from that. So it can be, you know, especially when it comes to like those lists or to-do lists, I encourage people just to be creative with the to-dos. 
because you never know, just as what Wendy was saying, you never know what's going to, you know, spark that creativity and get you excited. So just do a brain dump, you know, it can be on paper, you can type it out, record it, whatever it is that you have to do, what are the things that have to be done? Just, just go real quick <laughs> and see what you come up with. And then when you have some things, you can start organizing that in logical order. I mean, obviously you uh, can't uh, get a headshot without first booking a photographer, uh, you know, or, or getting your makeup done. You wouldn't do that out of sequence. So sometimes the um, sequence presents itself when you have everything um, there together for you to compare and uh, work with. So I think that way, you know, in focusing and, you know, visualizing that end result and just working the, your way step by step. If I were going to do this, how would I do it? And if you're not sure where to start, just brain dump <laughs> and see what comes out. Um, all right. So we've got um, about 15 minutes left. So I want to try to get as many. I know I could just, you know, I just love talking about this. And I'm so grateful for everyone's input on this. It's just really um so helpful. And, and it really, I think in this world of self-tape, it also makes you feel like you're not so alone, uh, that everyone is dealing with this and time management. And we had a question that came in about um, being able to deal with um, having distractions such as having a family and needing to take care of them. You know, they need our help, especially when you have children. So does any, uh, Wendy, I know you have uh, children. Um, do you want to go ahead and, and address that, how you balance all that out? Uh, <laughs> sure. With a calendar and a sense of humor, I would say, um, and being flexible. I mean, I have taught my kids that I remember when they came home from I remember when I volunteered in their preschool and everything had a home and they and all the kids come in, 25 kids come in and they all put their stuff away. But then my kids would come home and just leave everything. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> so I taught them at an early age, like when I showed them where the home was for their lunchbox, I'm not doing that. When, and now they're in middle school and it's like they come in and they, they they unpack everything and put it all in its home. They wash out. So like I've taught them to do the task because they can do it, you know? So, so something like that. Um, I mean, they do what they, they now it's funny because they do know that like when mommy and daddy have to self tape, like they need to, you know, find something to do. And I try to keep them off tech and read books and things like that. Um, I think balancing it is about communicating. I, I will say this as an actor, um, you know, I just did a post about it today, actually like 15 things that I've learned from juggling my life, you know, as an actress and, and a mom. And what I will say is like, is sharing the wins and the losses. I share like how, what we do and I share how we do it and how everything we've talked about today, you know, that like we make it this a priority, you know? And so teaching them like your creative life and involving them in that. Um, I mean, they're not like readers for me or anything like that. Um, I'm trying to just think there's, there's just ways in which you can empower them to be, as organized as they can. Of course, with that, you're going to have one kid who puts his stuff away and one kid who, you know, his socks are everywhere. And that's my house. But I try to, uh, you know, uh, appreciate when they're doing the thing that you ask them to do, leading with that, as opposed to following them around and saying, you should do this, you should do this. So when they do do something to congratulate them and then also show them how can, how can you get this done in a, in a quicker way, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there, I could go way deep dive, but I'm trying to do like a quick thing for you guys is just to really communicate to them and have them have a home for things and try to keep their things in place that way. And we clean up the house every night. Like, I mean, everyone has a task, like after dinner, they one you know, does the dishes and the other one helps, you know, with clearing the table, you know, so they have tasks that are keeping the house in a harmonious way. And I always sort of speak to that, that we want to create harmony and you're part of that. So how can we all do that? And it is never perfect, but, um, you know, we try. That's great, Wendy. Thank you. Oh, we have another question, Deb. I was wondering if you would take this, um, Someone had written in, uh, is there a way to manage time and be product most productive in the day if you don't get up at six in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Absolutely. Yes. So I think it is a myth that you have to be an early bird to get things done. And I am an early bird. I love getting up early. I want that time to myself before everybody else is awake. So I can just, I can be, have my coffee and do, and just focus on what I want to focus on. So if you are not an early bird, maybe you're a midday lark or a night owl, that's perfectly fine. You have to then shift where you do your thing, where you do your priority thing. So unfortunately, if you work for someone else and we're beholden to that company or job and it's nine to five, it's going to be a little tricky to do that. If you have some flexibility, I would say put your most important task when your brain is sharp, when you are at your best. And if you're at your best at 11 p.m. at night, then that is when you start and you give yourself a block of time to write that blog post, study that script, whatever it is, do the research, whatever it is that you need to do. So shift it because you don't have to be an early bird, but just be flexible because you may need to shift it around again, right? So the nature of the job is going to probably dictate that, but you don't have to be an early bird. You can certainly get things done later on in the day. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you. Michael, a question came in for you. I believe this is about when you're talking about writing um, your book. Did you work at the same time every day or did you have a certain amount of time each day to write? We, I'll be very honest. We were not that we were not that regimented or organized. We were like, you know, what what time can we do this week? What time can we do this? No, nope, I lie. I lie. There was a stretch of time during which we we knew we had certain writing periods. Uh, but you know, actor lives are never consistent in terms of time. So we would we had the flexibility built in to say, oh, I booked a thing. I can't do that day. Uh, but uh, but. Um, yeah, now I, I, it took me a minute to reconstruct that. We did, we did have, we did have a, a somewhat of a schedule, but uh, it wasn't a very strict one. I think it can help to have a schedule. I think it can help to have a routine. That's not to say that you have to stick to it every right. single day, and th- that's it. And don't beat yourself up if you don't. But when you build in a routine, it becomes more intuitive. It's like brushing your teeth, and you you, you do it. You don't have well, to also, convince yourself. Also, in a partnership, what's great is this is on the calendar. So if we're not going to do it, we have to talk to each other and go, we're moving yes. this. And that actually really helps a lot. Having a partner is so crucial because you get that accountability. If yeah. you, it's like going to the gym. If I know I have to meet you there, <laughs> I'm probably going to show up, right? And if I have to make a change, I'm going to call. So, so yeah, I think having the partnership and the routine that you both can sort of you know, flex with as you need to is pretty helpful. Yeah. And another thing too, is, you know, in that flexibility and creativity, just try new ways of doing your routine. You know, if you have that time set up to write or, you know, do whatever it is that you need to do, try it on the fly. Like uh, Deb was saying earlier, you know, can you record something? Can you jot down a draft? Can you talk something over of someone, you know, finding a new way just to approach the project can be really refreshing and energizing and you might come up with some great ideas or just wow you know actually I do it better here than I did at home or <laughs> so you never know you know what's going to happen so you know be open you know to not only having that routine but you know seeing what you can do to mix things up folks you talked a lot about like the you know the timers like I think of the Pomodoro method like you know the 50 minute 10 minute break that kind of thing so it all works that way. I, one like strictly pandemic method, a method I picked up during the pandemic, especially for, let alone, you know, any work we had to do that we were fortunate to have those of us who did, but, you know, we did have a lot of time for us to like work on those home projects, the photo albums, that one, you know, that corner of the room. I use the Kanban method a lot, which was, you know, those, those kind of swim lines with basically it was like, I, I called it uh, to do or in process or start in process. So I'm like, this is what I'm working on. And then what my favorite part of it was like finished, completed. I needed to see that I had called AT&T for those two years of that 999 charge that I never paid attention to until pandemic. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, great. I will schedule four hours to yell at someone on the phone. And so at least I saw, and so I kept that completed, got $80 back from at and I kept that up there to be like, yes, I achieved that. So Kanban, so I know, you, I, I, please, Deb. Did you use an app like Trello or using like a whiteboard and using it's, post-it you, notes? You, the second one, Deb, it, it, the whiteboard okay. did, because I do love equally the, the when, when iPhone sync 
when everything yes. synced between the iCal on my computer to yes. the phone to my mom's computer, that blew my mind and I loved it. However, I think you're absolutely right. We have to kind of eight bit and go back a little bit to where having a visual like that. So absolutely, yes. the Kanban method was okay. on the whiteboard specifically so I could see that daily in the what I have yet to do, what I'm in the middle of. And just the beauty was that ending and until you finally would like erase it or I actually did post-its on the whiteboard. Yeah, believe it or not. I think I think a lot of this is about finding the system that works for you because some yeah. people work better with something audit, uh, auditory. Some mm -hmm. people, I, you know, I can make a list all day on my computer. I'll forget to look at it. But this, yeah, I'll, I'll look at this. <laughs> and And I cannot overstate what everybody else has said, which is, the joy of crossing it out or checking it off. And, and yes, I absolutely have done what Barb does. It's like, wake up. <laughs> you know, if I if I need to feel like I'm getting something done, I will I will reverse engineer and go just to give myself some damn check. check yeah, marks. on the legal pad specifically. That's yeah. such a satisfying. Check mark. Oh. Yeah. It's um, amazing to do something that was not on the to-do list and put it on the to-do list so you could just cross it off i love that feeling <laughs> laurie I, laurie i want to go back i want to go back for a second to because you brought up disappointment and i don't know that we mm, talked about it very yeah. much and i i i have uh, perhaps a controversial uh, approach to that uh that that goes against uh this the modern age of positive thinking i believe in low expectations i believe in going in going it, 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 and and i don't believe in um, the mythology around cause and effect, like if I do this, then I'm going to book an acting job. It doesn't work that way in our business. I don't think that A, B, and C leads to Z. And so I, 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 I live by low expectations. And then I'm always so pleasantly surprised when I get things done or when something good happens. I, to this day, I'm 61 years old. When I get an acting job, I'm like, what? You're kidding. Because, and, uh, I feel that that is a great method for avoiding disappointment. Well, then everything becomes joyous, doesn't it? Everything yes. that you get. And there's yes. the work that you do um, in order to get that wonderful work that you do, Michael. And then you can enjoy the the the, the process and the task that you're doing, mm. as opposed to I'm doing this because it's going to result in this. We never know. I didn't know I was going to find a publisher for my book. I had to enjoy the task. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, something that you just said, um, you know, about that and the, the low expectations and celebrating and all that. One thing that I like to teach people, and this can be really empowering, it's kind of a, a roundabout way in a way, but it works. Um, whenever you've gone through something and it's been, you know, less than satisfying, go back and re-engineer what took place, you know, and just ask yourself, okay, so what went well? Okay. Write it out think about it, speak it out. What didn't go so well? Okay, yeah, that didn't go well, that didn't go well, that didn't go well. And then just do a little bit of role playing. If you knew what you knew now, back at the beginning of when this whole thing started, what would you do differently? And that can be so empowering because you have this wealth of information. You know, I wouldn't make that phone call. I wouldn't have, <laughs> you know, uh, done that. Um, I wouldn't have taken that step. And it can be so much more empowering because you know that the next time an opportunity, a situation, something similar, something exact, or even something completely random like that, that pops up, you can apply it and you'll be so much more on it because you knew, you knew, you know, I got, it didn't go so well last time, but it's not happening this time. So that can be a really helpful exercise. Well, and you know, you're speaking to a room of actors. So, I mean, we can just take that and run with it. And it sounds very healing. Thank you. Um, one very quick last question is someone had written in about when you get, when you're busy and you get overwhelmed, would anyone like to address that quickly? Um, just as some, uh, some words of advice. Prioritize. Um, I honestly just live by if your loved ones will be accommodating friends if they haven't learned by if and the when you know like how i think wendy hit on it a lot of our people know about the hopefully possibly um if and then the priority is just i think if you can if you know where and i think what i do love now is as much we could talk about art and the reasons why we do this craft and the beauty of our storytelling all day long let's talk about business um money you need to pay bills 
and you need to pay rent and shelter and food and fun times. So prioritize that and then everything else hopefully will accommodate. And I'm, I'm being very practical. Please focus on love and focus on other things coming your way. But those of us, you know, in that business sense right now, work first. And then I think the other things will fall into place because hopefully you are surrounded by people who understand that our work and our art and craft is all in one. So it's not just me having fun and telling funny bits. This pays my living. So that's, it's just that. It's simply that where I can prioritize that which pays me the most first and then everything else. Like even like, I think we also understand with our volunteer work from union stuff to volunteer on a panel. If Michael had booked something and he was on a jet to, you know, to um, Hawaii, we would understand and we'd be so happy and grateful. And we'd understand. That's just, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, uh, there's no scenario in which you can do everything. Some things are going to come up that you're going to miss. And I feel the rule I have for myself is if you can't do anything about it, then this, the fretting about it doesn't have any value. So uh, there, there, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, which does happen sometimes because, you know, it seems to all come at once. It's like, oh, OK, I can't do that one. Can't do it. And the world will continue to spin. People will not hate you. You will not be fired or beat up or, you know, it's it. And I, I sometimes have to remind myself, yeah, there's always going to come yell at you. You just have you're just going to have to decline that audition or you have to decline that opportunity. God, I wish I could. Yeah. And don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. So, I mean, sometimes we're thinking about what other people will think about us, but what you think about yourself and how you feel at the end of the day um, should matter and should count and things will happen or they won't. And so what's the next step? Right. right? For, fortunately, right? actors yeah. have unshakable self-esteem. So this is never. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'd like to add to you for that, like when you're feeling overwhelmed or in a situation, declare that time for yourself, you know, take the time that you need. It can be, you know, as little as five minutes, it can be a half hour or more. Just take time for yourself. If you just need to gather your thoughts you know, go for a walk, do some exercise, something that will center you, something that will ground you. You know, you can use your training as an actor to use that in your life. Like, how am I showing up to this performance of my life? Am I running into it or am I being intentional and focused with where I'm going? So, you know, sometimes when things get going and they get crazy, okay, let's just, you know, come down, center, refocus, you know, gather your energies, and then you can work from there. Beautiful. And that we're going to have to uh, close this discussion tonight. There's, I so appreciate, we all do from the foundation, um, Michael, Wendy, Rochelle, Parvesh, Deb, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your insights and your experience that you've had uh, we really appreciate it. And um, I also, Jenny, uh, a shout out to you from the foundation uh, that putting this together. I mean, what a great idea. And also to have this balance today, too, of the, our two experts here on time management um, and productivity and our wonderful, amazing working actors who have are also are all helping other people too. So we really do appreciate your, your uh, contributions today and wishing everyone fabulous good luck with all of the projects that you're working on and your productivity and relaxation as well. Thank you.